Praise the Lord and welcome everyone to the Following the Way of the Cross broadcast. I am Pastor Byron and we're coming at you live on this Friday night and we thank you for joining us on the broadcast tonight and uh, getting ready to continue our study in the book of Galatians tonight. But before we do that, I want to introduce my special guest tonight. I've got uh, Minister Justin Klump. Glad to be here. Thanks for watching, y'all. And he's a little under the weather tonight, ladies and gentlemen, so if he starts uh, spitting and sputtering, that's okay. Thanks a lot. <laughs> and uh, we've got uh, Brother Felix Armanza with us tonight. We are, it's always a pleasure rather to be here, Pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're so thankful to have both of you. And um, before we get started tonight, uh, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, we've got our, our Crossline Radio Determined Camp Meeting. I always want to alert you of uh, if there's maybe some new listeners tonight that have just uh, tuned in uh, here in Houston, Texas. That'll be next March. And you want to get your room, get your reservations now. This place is going to fill up over here. And uh, there's going to be a lot of folks coming from each area, each direction. And uh, we just encourage you to uh, tune in to that, uh, or be here if you can, rather. We're going to be uh, uh, having these uh, camp meeting services live on the Roku channel as well. Uh, so you'll be able to watch then. But that's March the 13th through the 15th, ladies and gentlemen, if you can be here. It'll be a blessing to you. I can assure you the last camp meeting we had was a blessing, and this one will be a blessing as well. Uh, so we just invite you out to that as well. The week before, or excuse me, not the week before, but uh, out here in November, the 8th and the 9th, we'll be having Pastor Curtis Hutchinson out here. And uh, he will be with us uh, for two services, a Saturday night service at 7 and then a Sunday morning service at 10. And uh, just looking forward to these meetings, praise God. But uh, praise the Lord, we're not going to keep you waiting any longer. We're going to get right into the Word tonight. And uh, let's pray if we would tonight, guys. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for your grace that is sufficient, yes. that surpasses all of our understanding. Your grace does, Lord. We give you all the praise and just ask for the help of the Holy Spirit right now on this broadcast tonight. Lord, I pray that you would just draw people right now to this broadcast, that the truth would be spoken, and that you would use this truth, Lord, to set them free tonight, Father. Lord, we just give you all the praise, ask you to help us all to speak clearly to your people tonight, to bring the great truth of the Word of God, Lord, in a way that they would understand, in a way that they might be free from the bondages of sin. Yes. And we yes. give you all the glory for it. Yes, Ask it in Lord. Jesus' name. Yes, amen, amen and amen. 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 Praise yes. God already since the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise, Praise Lord. God. It's going to be a good broadcast yes. tonight. Amen. 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 Well, uh, we left off um, in verse 4, I believe it was, or excuse me, verse 3. And uh, tonight we're going to be covering verses 4 and 5, maybe 6 if we get that far. And um, really the... The idea it stays the same, ladies and gentlemen. Really, uh, Paul is always drawing a contrast in between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant here. And um, if you'll remember, we talked about last Friday. He said, For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, meaning every man that's putting himself under the law, that he is a debtor to the whole law, meaning that he has to keep that law in totality in every point of it in order to fulfill it. Now, in verse 4, he says, Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but when I, when I see the term fallen from grace, I, I see something that today has uh, taken over the modern church. Uh, the modern church today has fallen from God's grace. And, and what a statement for Paul to use, you that are justified by the law, meaning you're using the law to uh, try to please the Lord as a means of your salvation. You're trying to justify uh, your salvation by works. And uh, really this is what I see the Apostle Paul saying here. He says, Christ has become of no effect to you. Now you think about the magnitude of a statement yeah, like that. Amen. My Lord. Christ has become of no effect to you. Meaning if Christ has become of no effect to you, ladies and gentlemen, how can you be saved? <clears throat> we have to have Christ to be saved, don't we? Amen. Christ has become of no effect to you, you whosoever of you are justified by the law. Yeah. And it's an amazing statement here that he makes. 
you are fallen from grace once again. How can a person be saved if they're fallen from grace, Brother Justin? Yeah, what you're doing when you put yourself under the, the law is you're frustrating the grace of God and you're, um, you're stifling uh, the, the flowing power from the Holy Spirit in your life. And let me say it better this way, that Paul, in the book of Ephesians, refers to grace as the effectual working of God's power. Now that's superintended by the Holy Spirit. And so the only way that the Holy Spirit is going to superintend God's grace in your life is if you're operating in the government of grace, and that's only done by keeping your faith anchored in the cross of Jesus Christ. When your faith shifts from the cross of Jesus Christ into law and works, now your power source is self, it's flesh. And as a result of that, you're going to fall from the grace of God, meaning that you're going to stifle the very power that you need to live a victorious life. Absolutely. Absolutely. The power to live a victorious life, ladies and gentlemen, just as the brother just said, it comes by our faith in the cross of Calvary. Amen. But I want to bring out the fact here that whenever a person stays under law long enough, it can eventually lead to the loss of their soul. We see that all the way through Scripture. Amen. Uh, you can't get away from that fact. So to be fallen from grace, if you stay under that bondage long enough, listen, if you're trying to come about your salvation by any kind of effort of self-will, self-will power, whether it's your intellect, your strength, or whatever it might be, trying to please God in that way, Christ is becoming of no effect to you, ladies and gentlemen. This is what the idea here is what the Apostle Paul says. And Felix, I know you got some good stuff over there. I wanted to mention that the Galatians had a choice. They had to choose between law or grace. Yes. Between law or grace. And if they made the choice of choosing law, then as you mentioned, uh, choosing law means that one returns to the slavery of sin and they will be lost. That's right. And also the idea of fallen out of grace to be justified by the law meant that the believer has fallen from grace fallen from grace the idea of fallen means to be cast out means to drop away and it has uh, just the whole term itself ye are fallen from grace means that they have apostatized so that if one falls one forsakes grace and there as we stated already there remains no other way to be saved exactly exactly there remains no sacrifice for sins except you put your faith in the blood of jesus christ Amen. um so when we talk about uh, this word fallen, I'm, I've just looked in the Zawadis here, and what one of the uh, particulars he speaks of, it means to fall out or from their place. Or really we're talking about a position here too as well, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So, you know, how, if you've been joining us for any time on these broadcasts, when we talk about our place and we talk about our position being in Christ, I see this word fallen here is being used really in that sense um, to fall out or from their place. Um, he uses an example here as of the stars from heaven. When the star, how many have seen a, a meteorite come mm. falling out of it, <laughs> yeah. falling out of orbit, falling out of its place? There was one not long ago in, in Russia there. And um, so this is really the, the idea. When we place our faith in anything else except the cross of Calvary, listen, Anybody you're sitting under, ladies and gentlemen, as it regards um, a teacher or a preacher or maybe a friend of yours that is speaking into your life, maybe you're a new believer, you're listening tonight on the broadcast, it's essential that you find somebody that is telling you the truth. It's essential that you Amen. find somebody that is leading you to the cross of Calvary right. for your every single need. That's right. And I mean every single need. I'm not talking about just, uh, you know, not only daily life and living, but your spiritual life. Realizing that we're, we're bankrupt in the spirit, we're morally broken, and we've got to have 
uh, and continue to live this life as a man that's drowning at sea. That's right. And, and, and be pointed to the cross of Christ for every single need. And if you don't have somebody that's in your life that's telling you that truth, you need to find somebody or stay Amen. tuned in to these broadcasts right here. My wife and I, we have these broadcasts uh, Monday through Thursdays. We're doing a study on the book of Romans right now. Stay tuned in to these broadcasts and get this truth down in your heart because this is the only truth that can set a person free. That's right. You know, Pastor, and, and it's very clear that I mean, either your faith is in the finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ or it's not. And we mentioned it a couple of weeks ago that it doesn't matter what else it's in. If it's, if it's not in the cross of Jesus Christ, that spiritual adultery there and, you and you're, you're, you're leaning on the arm of, of the flesh, you're putting confidence in man, in uh, man's wisdom or in, um, in, the, in the world system. And when you, you go the ways of the world, you're going to get worldly results. And so you, you, you can't take things of the world and try to incorporate that into the church because all you're doing is injecting leaven that's going to poison the flock. There you go. Very good point. Uh, you know, you mentioned something there, Brother Justin, I think we need to touch on. And um, it, it, let's go over to Romans chapter 7 and let's just look at what spiritual adultery is because uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because there's a lot of misunderstanding there as it regards what spiritual adultery is. A lot of people... Uh, when they read through the verses of Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, um, a lot of people, they really take this out of context because it's not the easiest thing to understand. They, they use it as a conflict between a man and a woman's marriage yeah, here. Yeah. And, and really what it's speaking of is spiritual adultery here. I'll pick it up in verse 2. For the woman which have a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is freed from that law. And, is, and she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. The other man is Christ. The one that died here is the law, ladies and gentlemen. And because you are trying to go back to something that is dead, that God said is dead, it's of no worth to you anymore. God says when you try to go back to something that I've already done away with, it becomes spiritual adultery. You become an adulteress. Mm -hmm. And that's the understanding of these verses right here. Um, so when we look at this, he says in verse um, uh, 4, Wherefore, my brethren, you are also become dead to the what? Law. What does it say? You become dead to the law by what? There it is. The body, the body of, of Christ. Christ. Cross. Dead to the law by the body of Christ that you should be married to another, even to him who was raised from the dead that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So he's, he's giving us this illustration through these verses, ladies and gentlemen. This is, this is not referring to some conflict in, in a marriage or some sort. Um, as, as most people look at this, we understand that, that Christ was saying, look, I want to take care of your every need here. Right. Amen. Right. I, I want to supply all your needs Amen. according to his riches and glory. That's Amen. Right. Amen. And, and so when we pick up another method or another ide ideology, let's call it that, when we pick up some other methodology of try how, how to have victory in Christ other than what he's already provided, it becomes spiritual adultery, Brother Felix. I was going to mention related to that idea is the law will always crucify Christ because mm -hmm. its penalty is death. Yes. And what happens is we're denying the justification that has been given to us by Christ, which is the only means that God will accept. And if we don't, if we deny that justification, the end result is, as we said earlier, the person will become lost. Exactly right, my brother, exactly right. And, and Christ becomes here, he becomes of no effect unto you, you that are justified by the law. What a statement. Yeah. What a statement. Justified by the law, you're fallen from God's grace. So I think we have a good understanding of what's being spoken of here. 
Uh, I tell you what, let's move on to the next verse here in verse 5. He says this, For we, through the Spirit, now, through the Spirit means faith. Amen. That speaks of faith right there. We, through the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. So, Brother Justin, just tell me in your own words what the Apostle Paul is saying here. This is just a great verse, and there's so much here. First, you you see that Paul isn't, isn't taking a holier-than-thou attitude, that he lumps himself in with the church. He says, so for we. And, and so he, he's doing it in the right spirit. And then we see the power source that we, we see it's through the spirit. And so that's very important that it's through the spirit that, that, we're, that we're saved. It's, it's through the spirit that we're sanctified. It's, it's um, God um, sanctifies us through the work of the Holy Spirit. He superintends God's work in our life as we keep our faith anchored in the cross of Calvary. So we have the power source. And then he says, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. And so we see the mechanism that it's by faith in the cross that we're justified and it's by faith in the cross that we're sanctified. So it's by faith and it's and they're both superintended by the Holy Spirit. So he says here that we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness and, and see that's when when you look at that that term the hope of righteousness that you know we are I know a lot of Christians that they're saved and they love God, but aren't pursuing the righteousness of Christ. They may be pursuing, may or may not be pursuing the things of God, but it's in the wrong spirit and that it's usually to better their worldly circumstances rather than for the glory of God. And, and Paul um, deals with, with that in, um, in the book of Romans chapter 10, the first few verses, it was the same thing that they had a zeal for God, but not according to his righteousness. And so what we see here is, is that when we're walking in the spirit, um, when, we're, when we're abiding in the vine uh, and we're operating in faith, um, that, that, that we can hope, uh, that we have a hope of righteousness, mm -hmm. um, that we should be concerned with the righteousness of God for his sake and for his glory and for his kingdom and, uh, and let him be Lord and we be servant and not vice versa. You know what? When, when you mentioned that just now, I thought um, my mind went to a scripture where Jesus was talking about, ladies and gentlemen, he was talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. When you mentioned that, that there's a lot of people out there that they're just serving him for, mm -hmm. for whatever they can get out of sure. it. And um, I'm reminded of when Jesus said, uh, these people draw near to me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Amen. And um, that's, that's really the modern church today in a nutshell. Yep. People are just going through the motions of Christianity. And God's not fooled, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. If that's you, God's not fooled. He, 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 we're all naked before him, you see. Mm -hmm. And he knows, that, he knows every fired thought. Yeah. Um, so we can't fool God. Uh, he's not going to be mocked, the Bible says. And um, you've got to get serious about your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And um, that's the only way to live for him is to deny oneself, yeah. meaning to deny everything about you, your own personal desires, your, your all your things. Listen, whenever you deny self, that means you deny your willpower, you deny your strength, you deny everything, Amen. Amen. Uh, everything that can get in the way of God's plan. And see, God can't accept human power, human strength. It's of no worth to him. That's Jesus right. even said that in the, in the book of John, I believe it's chapter 5. Human strength is of no worth. Yeah. And he's telling us right there, ladies and gentlemen, that we can't, we can't offer anything up to God. When we look at the story of Cain and Abel, it flat out shows us that God is only going to accept faith in the sacrifice. Brother Felix? I was going to mention the phrase, through the Spirit makes reference to the fact that the Holy Spirit will only function from a foundation of faith, just as you mentioned. Amen. And it's faith that's centered in the cross. The phrase, by faith, um, refers to the fact that this is in contrast to the flesh. The Judaizers were emphasizing circumcision, and circumcision represented the flesh. The phrase waits eagerly makes reference to the Christian waiting for a full realization of 
salvation, meaning um, that in our salvation process, glorification is the end result. And the, the term waits also has the idea that one doesn't work for the salvation. And as well, the hope of righteousness. Completed righteousness will come when the Lord comes for his church when we receive that glorified body. Amen. That's right. Our, our righteousness, uh, the Bible tells us, is as a filthy rag. That's right. And, and we don't want to go into what that's even speaking of. Um, so, you know, we, if, if we had any at all, ladies and gentlemen, if, if we could save ourselves, that Christ didn't need to come to the earth, you that's see. Right. Yep. Uh, so it takes humanity completely out of the way and, and moves the person that desires to be saved to a place of total dependence upon God, you see. Um, Philippians 3, 9. This verse says, And be found, where? And be found in him. Listen, the place to be found in God's righteousness is to be found in him. Amen. You've got to be clothed in his righteousness, Amen. ladies and gentlemen. You've got to be placed down into the body of Christ. The literal body of Christ is the way God sees you. He sees you placed down into the literal body. He says, and be found in him not having my own righteousness. That's good. Not, That's good. Drop my mic here, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize. But not having my own righteousness, he says, which is of the law. Now, did you catch that part? Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith Amen. definite article being there the faith of christ meaning everything that christ did we had to have amen yeah. we had to have it in order to be saved the righteousness which is of god by faith it's by faith and faith alone so let's break it down to where people live today if we can and i'll get you guys' thoughts on this but today the modern church lives in a place to where they're taught to pray more. My Lord. They're taught to fast more. My Lord. They're taught to uh, attend every function the church comes up with. They're, they're being placed under denominational laws and rules and, and regiments. And, and they're being taught to, to do this instead of have faith. It's very seldom you run across somebody today that is pointing you to the cross of Calvary for every need. Yeah. And saying this is the only thing you can do is receive it. Amen. Go ahead, brother. You know that, and that's a, a major point that we need to draw home. That there's there's ministries out there that will, um, you know, talk down on these on this forty days of purpose and the twelve steps and the eight steps, and and that's not of God. And it's good that they're shedding light on it. But th those same pastors, when you go to them with a problem, they're going to put you under a system of works as well. Amen. Meaning this, that they're going to tell you, well, if you're dealing with this problem in your life, this sin. Well, then you need to read more chapters of your Bible a day, or you need to spend more hours in prayer, or you need to fast more. And what what that's doing is you're you're putting your faith in your Christian principles rather than putting your faith in a work that's already been done at the cross of Calvary. And so Amen. now the, the power source shifts from Holy Spirit to self, and the object of your faith shifts from the cross of Jesus Christ to the things you're doing as a disciplined Christian. You should read your Bible. You should pray. If the Lord lays it on your heart to fast, you should fast. However, those things are an output. Those things are a result of abiding in the vine. If Amen. you're putting your faith in those things as a means of victory, as a means of righteousness, or as a means of sanctification, that means you're laboring for victory, and that's called works, even if it's biblical. Even if it's biblical, if you're doing it as a means. Just like Paul wrote in, in this entire epistle, they were putting their faith in things that are biblical. Circumcision is biblical. But if, if, if you're putting your faith in that as a means of righteousness, then you're not trusting in the righteousness of Christ. You're establishing your own righteousness. I'm, I'm going to try to use an analogy here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and, and, and a lot of people, you may not understand this, and I apologize, but I, I think you'll get the picture. Whenever um, we have our mixing board over there in the sound booth, Justin, mm -hmm. and whenever we plug something into the input, that input being faith in the finished work of Calvary, 
correct faith, proper faith in the finished work of Calvary is going to come out of that soundboard somewhere. It has to come out. Mm -hmm. There is an input and there is an output on every channel. Mm -hmm. And what goes in must come out. So if it's true faith coming in, okay, if it's true faith in the finished work of Calvary, what's going to come out is a proper work. Yeah. In, in Christ, true faith in the finished work of Calvary produces a proper work. That's right. Now, if you've got your faith in something else, all of a sudden you've got to hit the mute button. Yep. So that thing doesn't come out, you see. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise what's going to come out is a law. It's going to come out as a, as a work that you have conjured up as something that you're doing within and with of your own self. Yep. And so you need to hit the mute button there and say, no, we, we've got to stop and rest and, and refocus and say, wait a minute, my faith has been in this. And, and that's why Paul, the apostle, ladies and gentlemen, he said, examine your own selves amen, to see amen, if you amen. be yeah. in the faith. That's good. Yeah. In the faith. Brother, right. uh, Brother Felix. I was going to mention, if you choose law, which means that you're choosing to do a work, the end result is you're going to separate yourself from Christ. And, you're go and you will not have a relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. And another way of saying it is to seek faith through legal works. Through legal works. The end result is you're going to uh, obtain the curse of the law. Yes. That will be the end result. So, Brother, Brother Felix, can you, when you say legal works... Um, let, let's expound on that just a little bit because I think that that needs to be interpreted. I think what you're trying to say is when you say legal works, what you're saying is uh, a legal work is something that is produced by proper faith. Yes. Absolutely. I just wanted to make sure people understand when we say legal work, legal work is being produced by proper faith. God doesn't accept a work if it's not done in proper faith. In other words, let me try it like this. God has to conceive whatever he wants done and then he has to birth whatever he wants done through his strength and his power. Okay. That's the way I see a proper work being done in the sight of God. Um, so when we look at this, for we, that's the believer, through the spirit, that means God's power. Amen. Through Amen. the Spirit. That's it. Through the Spirit. Wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Really, um, you know, I, I do see a, a indication here of the hope of righteousness being our uh, resurrected state that's coming that's soon. Good. Yeah. Amen. That, really, a hope of righteousness. That's We talked last Wednesday on the doctrine of the rapture of the church. And um, if you didn't hear that message, you need to go back and listen to it, ladies and gentlemen. It's on our on-demand section there. But um, the, the, the doctrine of the rapture is, is something that was tied so closely to the cross. We're not, we're not going out of context when we teach the rapture. Amen. There wouldn't be no rapture of the church if it wasn't for the cross of Calvary. Amen to that. Amen. We, we, there is no, there is no uh, redemption without the blood. Amen. It, it's that simple, Brother Justin. And, and that's what he's driving at here. If, if, if you read in uh, Titus chapter 2, I believe it's verse 13, but I know it's in chapter 2, he talks about the blessed hope. And, yes. and, and so yes. the, the hope of righteousness is we, we have, it's sort of like our sanctification in, in that we, we're sanctified in our position and that we're, we are in Christ and we're positionally sanctified. But then there's, there's growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord, and there's a sanctifying grace as we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord that he, he takes our condition to bring it up to our position. And it's the same thing with our righteousness, that, that we are righteous because we're covered in the blood of Jesus. We are in Jesus. Mm -hmm. But we, we realize the fullness of that when we get to glory. Mm -hmm. That, that um, Paul writes in uh, Romans 8, uh, verse 23, and he, he talks about about that we, we wait for the adoption, that um, on this earth that we're born again, that we're, uh, that we're born of the Spirit, that we're born again, but this hope of righteousness or the blessed hope is that it comes to a full realization 
and in that we are adopted into the family of God and we're ushered into the portals of glory and we and we we uh, finally see it in its entirety that that's the full re- full realization of the righteousness of Jesus Christ amen praise the lord um, I'm going to take this a little different direction. I, I, I'm over here in Romans 5 and 5, if y'all want to uh, flip over there. Romans 5 and 5. And uh, Paul's talking about hope here. And um, let's begin in verse 4. It says, And patience, uh, I tell you what, let's go back to verse 3. And, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed. And hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which Mm. is given to us. Now, how many know tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that we can't even love properly without the power of God living in us? Amen. Um, Really, we can't even believe properly. That's right. We can do nothing in the spirit, in and, in and with of ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. Our faith is something that has to grow. And, and the reason I brought in this verse here is because these tribulations that Paul is talking about here, they work with patience. Yes. And when patience begins to grow, guess what else begins to grow? Mm-hmm. Faith. Amen. When patience begins to grow, faith begins to grow. When faith begins to grow, love begins to grow in you. Christ is growing in you. Yes. Um, I'm reminded of a verse of scripture where the apostle Paul said, let Christ be formed in you. Amen. And, and that's exactly what we are to be doing as Christians. Somebody says, well, I always hear y'all talk about rest, pastor. I always hear y'all talk about just just rest in Christ and rest in his finished work. What, is that, what does that mean? Ladies and gentlemen, that doesn't mean you're going to be inactive. That means you're going to be growing daily in the grace of God. He's going to be working on your heart each and every day. He wants to grow himself in you. He wants Christ to be formed in you, you see. He wants us to be Christ-like. That way when we go in this world, we are the light of the world. And we're not uh, somebody that's um, maybe, you know, I, I, I see a lot of times on social media that there's, there's people all the time, and it, it just angers me, that they'll profess to know Christ, professing Christians, and, man, they've got pictures on their Facebook page with uh, mm. Milwaukee's best beer, yeah. and they've got all this garbage mm. that, My they're, Lord. that they're dealing with. And, and listen, if you're do, listen, you need to get saved. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right. You, you haven't even found the real thing mm. yet if you're still yeah. doing that stuff, right. ladies and gentlemen. Yep. You've got to come out. That's right. And, and and listen, whenever I was born again, I was a alcoholic like you wouldn't believe. Mm. I mean, my my hands shook before I found the power of God, and He delivered me. Yes, Amen. you see, there's power in this That's thing, right. ladies and Amen. gentlemen. Amen. When you put your faith in the cross mm. of Christ, there's power in it. Praise God. There's power in it, and there was power to deliver me, and there's power to deliver you tonight. Amen. Who are watching? That's right. That's right. Uh, Go ahead, brother. A true child of God hates sin. There you have it. That's a good marker. Do you hate sin and do you love the brethren? Mm -hmm. That's it. Very good. If you hate sin, you know, sin should make your heart sick if you're you're a true believer in Christ. It ought to make your heart sick when you do it. And and when we do it, the right thing to do is take that thing before the Lord and say, you know, Lord, I know this is is not pleasing in your sight, you know, and uh, I just need some help. Amen. Amen. You know, just take that thing before the Lord. There it is. You know, really, really the Lord doesn't have, boy, I'm going to make some people mad when I say this, but really he doesn't have a problem with our sin if you're a believer. Amen. Your sin has been forgiven, ladies and gentlemen, past, Amen. present, and future. Amen. Do you understand that tonight? But there's power in this thing when we place our faith in the cross of Calvary and nothing else. There is power to deliver me from a cigarette habit. That's right. A foul mouth. You fill in the blank. We all got it. That we, every one of us, even after we become believers, there's still things that God is wanting to root out of there. That's right. And a lot of times, you know, it, it's not the things that cursing, smoking, drinking. It, that, it's not those things. The, the, the things that the devil's going to get you with, ladies and gentlemen, is jealousy, envy. All those things that are deeply rooted in your heart. 
those, those attributes of the sin nature. And all you can do is lay at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, this is not pleasing in your sight. I want you to help me. Yeah. I want you to help me in this area in my, wife, in my life. And, and, and see, when we talk about sanctification, that's what progressive sanctification is. Yeah. God is progressively molding us and shaping us into Christ-like images on the earth. Amen. Brother Felix? I was going to mention related to the idea, uh, rather related idea is that, you know, he desires for us to be changed. But we have to allow the Holy Spirit to have the liberty that he needs in our lives in order for the grace, that flow of grace to be flowing and for him to have the liberty to show us uh, that there should be a check within our spirit yes. if we're going the wrong direction. And uh, we should come to that realization that if we're going to do something, we, we need to be directed of, of the Holy Spirit as opposed to desiring our own will. Exactly. And when we're led of the Holy Spirit, we're going to find ourselves in his perfect will. That's right, brother. You know, um, I'm, I'm going to prove my point here through Scripture, okay? And, and if you guys want to turn there, we're, I'm going to go over to Hebrews chapter 12 and uh, verse 6 here. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 6. And um, it says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth. Amen. Now, did you catch that? Yep. For whom the Lord loves, he chastiseth every, excuse me, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he of whom the father chasteneth not? Now here's the telltale sign. If you're not being corrected by the Lord, you got a problem. Amen. you got a serious problem. You need to ask yourself, is the Lord correcting me on a daily basis, ladies and gentlemen? And, and really, he says, but if you be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then you are bastards and not sons. Yep. So it's very plain and simple right here that the Lord corrects us. He chastens us on a daily basis. You know, Pastor, and if I can just build on what you're saying in verse 6, it, it says every son. Every son. Every son. And so you have to examine your heart, or better yet, ask the Lord to examine your heart and to show you unrepentant sin in your life. Because if, if you're not being corrected or chastened or scourged of the Lord... Um, then you need a heart check because it says every son whom he receiveth. And so it, it's, it's not some, it's every one. And you, you need to be sure, you need to examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. And if there you're you sitting go. under a ministry or under a pastor and you, you never feel the prick of the Holy Ghost, if there's never a sense of conviction, if, you, if you're never corrected of the Holy Spirit, then you, you need to seek the Lord's counsel about getting uh, into another ministry, one that preaches the cross of Jesus Christ, because it will convict you of your sin, but it can also edify and build you up and grow you in the grace and knowledge of Christ. Well, you know, the, the cross, Brother Justin, it, it really it reveals the heart of man. Yeah. What it Amen. Does when it's preached, it reveals the, the wickedness in man's heart. Um, you know, I'm thinking of a scripture right now where Jesus said the, the hearts and intentions of man are evil continually. Mm. Yeah. Are evil continually. And we're, we're writing this book right now. I am on, um, on the doctrine of total depravity, of which I think everybody needs a copy of. And um, there are so many uh, ministers today, ladies and gentlemen, that are preaching this feel-good, ear-tickling um, kind of gospel that is nothing more than uh, poison in the pot. Yeah. It, it's humanistic psychology. Yep. It tells you how great you are. It tells you what a champion you are, all these things. And, and listen, ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand Romans chapter 3 first. Yeah. There's none good. Yep. No, not one. And we've got to realize and come to the fact that we are totally depraven before we'll ever even understand the atonement. Amen. Much less justification by faith. Amen. You, you won't understand it unless you understand your totally depraving state first. And, you know, 
knowing what I know now about the study guides I've written here, I probably should have written this one first mm -hmm. because it just gives us an understanding of what we are, the old man. And the good news is that we find in Romans chapter 6 that the old man has been crucified with Christ. Amen. Amen. But we still got to understand the first part first, you see. We got to understand that the old man is of no worth, can't save himself, totally depraved and totally broken, totally fallen. And then we get the benefits of the cross of Calvary imputed into our lives, you Praise see. God. And uh, Brother Felix? I was going to mention, uh, using, uh, referring to the word imputed, it's, it refers back to the idea of how Abraham received yes. righteousness. Yeah. He received righteousness by the simple fact that he believed Amen. God. Amen. At some point, he came, um, Abraham came from a family of idol makers. Mm. And at some point, he heard the voice of God. Yes. He heard God speak to him. And he believed what God said to him. Yes. We, need, we need to examine ourselves, as you mentioned earlier, and ask ourselves, are we truly listening to the voice of God? Are we hearing what he's telling us this day? Absolutely, brother. That's a very good point. I'm, I'm looking at the scripture here. I, I'm going to read um, what you just talked about. Uh, let's, let's go over to Romans chapter 4. And um, <laughs> I, I just love this uh, yeah. about Abraham, the, 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 the righteousness that was imputed into him because he believed, you Amen. see. And, and ladies and gentlemen, as we know, that was before the law of Moses was ever given. That's right. So there's no excuse. All right. Let's look at verse 18 of chapter 4 in the Romans there. He says, who against hope believed in hope? He was speaking of Abraham. Who against hope believed in hope. Now you think about that. Amen. What a statement. Praise God. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. God spoke that to me. He said he'll, he'd make Abraham the father of many nations. So shall thy seed be. And being not what? Weak in faith. You mean Abraham believed? Amen. There you have it. Amen. The Bible says it, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, I don't care if the Bible says paint your nose purple and your toenails pink you can get the paint out because that's what i'm going to do amen you got to right. ask yourself do you believe what this word says that's right do you believe what the bible says you got to understand watch what he says and being not weak in faith he considered what not his own body now dead mm -hmm. but when he was about a hundred years old neither the deadness of sarah's womb he staggered not wow praise my God. lord he staggered not at the promise of God mm. through unbelief, oh, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is, a, this is a man of faith right here. Amen. Amen. And, and this is what God is looking for. He's not looking at, for a bunch of Christians walking around, moping in their problems, going, man, I just don't guess God's going to help me out this mm. week. That's yeah. not pleasing to God. Yeah. What's pleasing to God is when we stand up in the middle of that trial, no matter how dark it is, and giving him glory. Amen. And thanking him for the, what's coming down Praise the road. Praise God. And you know, Pastor, if I can touch on what you're saying and sort of piggyback on what Brother Felix is saying about what Abraham came out of. You see, and, and it's just like us that we have to come out of that mess, out of, out of the, the world system or yes. um, a life of idolatry. Anything you love more, serve more, worship more, fear more than God is idolatry, and you need to get it out of your life. And, and so what, what he's saying here is that Abraham left all. He left his family. He left his homeland. He left his estate. He left his homestead. He forsook everything Amen. and came out of that and began to follow the Lord. And then he believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And it's just like the child of God now, even when you read in the Gospels, a very familiar text that it says, If any man would come after me, he must deny himself pick up the cross daily and follow me. So we see that there has to be a denial of self, of things that you love, of things that give you pleasure, and concern your, your, yourself with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Yes, amen. It, it, and that's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. It's about his righteousness. 
Mm. And what he has done for us, what he has provided for us at the cross of Calvary. Um, when we understand, ladies and gentlemen, um, the gospel in its totality. You see, I used to think um, that this thing, there was more to this book than the cross. Mm. I used to read this book out of context, ladies and gentlemen, because I was taught to uh, try to understand the deeper things of God. I was taught to try to understand that, listen, um, there's all these other things, and I wasn't reading the Bible in light of what Christ did at Calvary. That's a major problem. Yep. Anytime you pick up this Bible, you should be reading it in the light of what Christ did at Calvary. Amen. And I don't care what page you start on. Amen. From one page to the other, ladies and gentlemen, this book speaks to us about the sacrifice. Amen. That's right. About what took place 2,000 years ago on the cross. Amen. That's what it speaks about. That's what this book is about, ladies and gentlemen, is the cross of Calvary. Um, let's move on, if we would, would to um, verse 6. we got a little bit of time, and I guess what we'll do, we'll go ahead and get started on verse 6 here if we can. <clears throat> um, verse 6, it says, For in Jesus Christ... Now, there's your position once again, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It's, it's all over the place. Yeah. Amen. You, you can't get away from position in Christ. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision. Now, he canceled out both, okay? But faith, which worketh, how? By love. By love. Love was the cross of Christ. Amen. There was no greater expression of love manifested in the whole entire world from the very moment the beginning of the world began. Yep. There was no God before the foundation of the world knew what he would do. Hmm. He had all the chips in place, ladies and gentlemen. He understood how uh, everything was going to take place. He knows the beginning from the end, the Bible says. Yes. And he knew that he would establish spiritual laws. He knew that he would establish these laws to work by faith in the proper sacrifice. So whether you're circumcised or whether you're uncircumcised, Paul says, doesn't availeth anything. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if you're a Jew, Gentile, Greek, doesn't matter whatever, whatever uh, nationality you are, whether you're Muslim. Listen, it's by faith that worketh by love, and love was the cross of Calvary. Amen. And, you know, Pastor, in chapters, I'm um, sorry, in verse 6, um, there's sort of an ancillary verse in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, I believe, verse 8. Um, and he, it's, it's, a, it's a parallel verse. And what he's driving at is that it d doesn't matter what you do or what you abstain from doing. When he writes to the uh, church at Corinth, he, he's, he's talking about meats, whether we abstain from it or whether we eat it. That doesn't mean anything um so don't put your 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 hope or your faith in things that you're doing however don't think just because you're not doing those things and you're abstaining from those so-called bad things that that justifies you either it, that there's nothing you can do or abstain from doing in and of yourself that will put you in right standing in front of a thrice holy god you must be covered in the blood of the lamb and the only way to do that is by putting your faith in Jesus Christ, who he is and what he did on Calvary's cross. That's right, Brother Felix. I was going to mention the idea that uh, a related idea is the fact that what Satan's ministers are going to be doing is they're going to be using prayer, fasting, and law. And they're going to use them in such a way that a person that is seeking after the Lord, or another way of saying that one that is seeking for moral perfection, mm -hmm. the end result is that the person, especially when they're emphasizing law, the person is going to separate themselves from the gospel because doing these things, putting our faith in these things, does not represent faith. And we, 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 we need to understand that faith is needed for justification 
And love is the evidence of that justification. That's exactly right. Amen. You know, when we place our faith in the cross of Calvary, we got the power of the Holy Spirit working in us, producing that love, you see. Amen. And let me tell you, there's an endless supply of God's love. Yes, <laughs> Amen. His mercies are new every morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, and I'm yes. so thankful for that tonight. Yes, I don't Lord. know about you. Amen. Yes, I'm thankful Lord. for his mercy. Hallelujah to Praise the Lamb. God. Praise God. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are about out of time tonight. And we thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast tonight. And uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed this study. And I want to thank you guys for, for joining us That's as well pleasure. as always. And um We'll be coming back at you next week, and I, I really, the reason I wanted to go ahead and get into verse 6 there is because verse 7, I, I, I really see that we, where we can go next week with that, um, verse 7 beginning there. So when we come back next Friday at you, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be covering verse 7. You did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? And the only truth that I know is what Christ did at Calvary. Amen. That's the only truth I know. And um, once again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I want to invite you out personally. If you live in the Houston, Texas area, invite you out to Crossline Church this Sunday. And um, if you live anywhere in driving distance, this is the place to be because we're going to be lifting up the Jesus Christ of the cross. Good. We're not going to be lifting up another Jesus. We're going to be lifting up the one that died on Calvary's cross. My Lord, man. And um, he said if he be lifted up, he would draw all men nigh. And I totally believe that this is the place you need to be, ladies and yeah. gentlemen. And uh, we just ask you to come out and be with us. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're at 26434 Lexington Road, Spring, Texas is our address. And that zip code is 77373. About a half mile east of I-45 on Spring Cypress Road. And um, we just ask you to come out and be a part of what God is doing here. Amen. Amen. Also, as well, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, our study guides we have here. We have our study guide on the uh, book of Romans, chapter 6, 7, and 8. Um, the justification by study guide, as well as the spiritual law study guide. And uh, the, the doctrine of total depravity will be coming out pretty soon as well. So um, get those in your hands. You can get them at www.crosslinetv.com. And up on the top right, there is a products tab. And if you'll just go there, you can order them right there. And um, once again, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. We love each and every one of you. God richly bless you all. We'll see you Monday morning. Goodbye.